Hi everybody, my name is Jimmy Carroll. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Tech B2B Marketing. We're here at SBIE Photonics West 2024 doing the Manufacturing Matters podcast and I have the pleasure of being joined by Sinclair Voss and Human Benai and my colleague John Lewis. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time today. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. So um, I'd like to ask one of you or, or both of you to kind of let us know a little bit about, for those who don't know, about what your company does and, and what you're excited about. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we're a uh, nanomaterial manufacturing company. We manufacture thin film optical filters. Uh, what we do uniquely is that we basically entirely change the manufacturing platform for thin film filters with a uh, manufacturing process that's significantly more scalable than traditional coating processes. And uh, it really allows us to get these filters into uh, mass markets that would require, you know, a whole new order of magnitude of scalability, lower price and volume, really just democratizing the very, very expensive uh, optical components. So in terms of your customer base, right, I, I think of um, sensor technology continues to push camera technology forward, which continues to push machine vision and imaging mm -hmm. systems capabilities forward. And, and this is all in tandem with customer needs evolving and, and expanding, right? How do you guys respond to that? Well, what's your, in terms of product development, how do you respond to these, to these challenges mm -hmm. in, in a rapidly evolving <clears throat> market? Yeah, well, I think the, for me, the beauty is that um, all these markets have basically the same intrinsic need. They need to take a laser, illuminate what they're looking at, and the light bounces back, and you want to make sure only that laser light gets back into the sensor. And our filters really do that. They throw away all the ambient light. They allow really off-axis light to come in and still be very effectively uh, detected. So if you look at our markets, you know, the um, LiDAR automotive, 3D sensing, industrial sensing, medical sensing, all sort of various fluorescent type applications, um, high volume consumers are a major factor for us too, really getting into cell phones, getting into AR, VR, all works the same way. You basically need that highly flexible, highly performing optical filter to throw away that unwanted light. Mm. So uh, I have to ask this question just because John and I have been talking about it, right? But have you, have either of you seen the, uh, the Waymo car driving around town this week? Uh, so you mentioned LiDAR and I'm just curious if I, I want to get in one personally, but. Well, so um, funnily enough, that's where, I used to, that's where I used to work. I used to work at uh, a Bell, Belladine LiDAR, which was obviously a major LiDAR company. And I mean, I really do believe in that technology. Um, I think it still has a long ways to go with regard to capability, maturity, cost scaling, etc. But uh, I, I do believe one day in the next maybe 10 years or so, we'll all be sitting in these cars and we won't worry about the fact there's not a steering wheel and there's no gas pedal. So uh, mm. I believe in it, but there's a lot of work that industry has to do before it gets to the point where it's really mature. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, machine vision and imaging are, are, is really growing in automation space. You know, it, it's still a, it's not a mature market yet. They keep finding new applications. You know, higher resolutions, yeah. faster processing. Uh, that deep learning is opening up uh, new applications. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, some of the uh, uh, industrial inspection applications that you guys might play a part in? Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, yeah, basically, you know, um, most of these cameras and uh, machine vision sensors and industrial sensors are currently using filters. One challenge often is the uh, uh, size of the filter, because in many cases you want to have a very, very compact sensor so you can fit it in, uh, you know, very compact spots to monitor processes. And so we come in and we basically reduce the size of that filter by a factor of 20 almost. Mm -hmm. And um, because of the nature of our process, we're actually able to physically form our filters in a curved form. And that translates into a uh, much better sensitivity of the filter and reducing more noise in the background. Mm -hmm. And therefore, these industrial sensors can now actually be more sensitive than before. Uh, and of course, the scalability, you know, as the industries are all becoming more and more automated, uh, billions of sensors would be necessary, right? And to make that happen in a feasible way economically, you need to have more scalable optical filters too, which they happen to be a major part of bill of material for these sensors. Yeah, I, I, I know that you guys are involved in, in many other uh, industries and, and verticals, but I want to ask about just sort of the purview of the, of the podcast is manufacturing. And, and I want to ask a little bit about industrial automation and, and robotics in general. So 
You know, a lot of the systems that come into focus today um, in terms of media coverage and, and what you might see even on mainstream media news um, focuses on the robot because the robot's kind of the sexy part of it. But, but these automation systems, um, you know, for, take for example like these application specific systems like bin picking systems that, that make it easier, kind of democratizes automation for people to be able to say, all right, I need, I need this system that can do, you know, e picking of small automotive parts or even palletizing, depalletizing, picking parcels in, in a warehouse, something like that. The robot gets so much of the focus, right? Um, and they're cool looking, obviously, and they're, they're the largest parts, so they're gonna have, they're gonna have, you know, they're gonna be the center of the mm -hmm. image or the video or whatever that everyone sees, but, but so much goes into automation systems. It's not just, it's not just the robot, it's the vision, it's the motion control, it's the cables um, and the filters, right? Mm -hmm. So from, and a filter is just a small component, but it's not, it's not a, it's not an inconsequential component for so many of these systems. So like how can a filter improve the overall functionality of a robot system? Mm -hmm. George? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it comes down to what we said before in terms of if you can really have a filter that is, you know, very much, size to be appropriate to the sensor, big or small, and again our processes allow us to do that. Um, really high performing, so really if it's a bandpass, really steep edges, really good you know, signal to noise capability, um, able to be mounted directly on a lens or curved to whatever optics are in there, because many of these optics are, you know, they're, they're, they've got some good curvature to them, and if you don't match the, the filter to the lens curvature, you're going to get a performance disadvantage. So if we can do that job well, and and then if the, the sensor is chosen well with regard to a high performing laser and really well manufactured, you get a system that will give you that extra degree of accuracy. Um, the optical accuracy will be so much better and that makes your software um, almost better because you don't have to design the software to be quite as clever. You mm. get more resolution uh, in there. And, mm. and many of these, I know in the LiDAR space, the industrial robotics LiDAR space, a lot of the challenge right now is not this hardware so much as it's, it's the, the software aspect. So we make the, uh, the downstream work easier by doing that. Yeah. Uh, and then fundamentally, if you want to put optics in and replace electronics, it has to be cheap. So again, we we spend a lot of the time making our processes very scalable, very low cost. There's very little um, human touch to it. It is very automated, mm -hmm. and it's made in our you know facility in, in Orlando, Florida. So we were basically homegrown here. Are you, yeah. are you seeing uh, any notable trends in terms of customer requests mm -hmm. in certain applications yeah, or industries? Sure. Yeah, um, so on the customer side, I mean, the last, yesterday was just amazing. I mean, we, you know, if you look at the, the who's who of the, you know, the op, in the optic space from a sort of a system manufacturing from huge companies to smaller companies, you know, we're speaking to them right now. There's, there's a huge pool for the next generation of optical sensors, and that means the next generation of optical filters. So uh, I think really we're on a roll right now, and it's very exciting, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the next two days here will be equally as, uh, as energetic. So, uh, you know, a lot. And again, it's across the board. It's <coughs> consumer electronics, it's industrial, it's medical. It's really, as you move away from electronics doing the work to optics doing the work, uh, we're a critical component in that. Yeah, now, I, know I, wanted, I just wanted to follow up on the previous thing that I asked about too, because it's, I was just kind of thinking about it while you're answering is, there, speaking of application-specific systems, there are, some, there are some companies out there that maybe do deep learning, and they'll mm. say, well, oh, you know, it doesn't, image quality is less important than, than it used to be, and mm, not so much, mm. right? Uh, in software, it's becoming so much, so much more sophisticated and mm. easier to use in solving new problems relies on good images and it's like there are so many different components that come together to form good images and at the end of the day like that's what you need yeah. whether it's on the factory floor or beyond <clears throat> so i just wanted to add that yeah I if agree. i may add to that you know uh so you have uh, uh, camera vision and then you have time of flight 3d sensing type of things right uh for camera you're actually generating a lot more data than 3d sensing right and these robots usually, you know, we humans, we only have two eyes, but these robots, they often have dozens of eyes all around them. So it adds up and, you know, being able to provide a more reliable 3D sensing uh, platform can be potentially a replacement for a lot of, um, I guess, more data hungry, you know, uh, vision systems. So. Yeah, and, and that's interesting too that you mentioned 3D time of flight because that's a technology that has it's been around for a while, but it's, it's maturing. It's becoming more accessible for people 
with the release of sensors like the one from Sony, um, mm. and it's there's there's a growing application base for it, and it's just another one another one of these examples of different technologies in the space kind of advancing together to solve new problems and yeah. mm -hmm. um, create new opportunities and add new capabilities mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, so uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up when you were talking before about, um, you know, kind of replacing, uh, you know, improving the image quality so that all the, uh, I don't know what you call it, upstream or downstream, mm. yeah. uh, <laughs> it takes time, right? And so, you know, I, I wrote an application story once about, uh, you know, uh, an optical filter improving the MTF of the optical train in a barcode mm. reading application mm. allowed the, decrease the processing load so right. they could process more barcodes, you know, per second. Yep. Uh, you know, so you, by having a good, clear image with it in an optical train that provides the quality you need, you can decrease the processing load. Is that what you were kind of? Thinking? No, it's exactly right. I mean, I think it's sort of again in the lidar space or in the more industrial sensing space, it's the same thing. The more points on target, the better the fundamental optics. The less you need to work to recognize objects, to um, make decisions in the software space. And, you know, again, that's the whole challenge in many of these networks is the computing power required. You know, as Suman mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. the, the computing power required to do that, even for simple applications, is very painful. So the more you can do in the optics domain, the less in the software domain, the better, really. So. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I was thinking, you know, you talked about matching the curvature of the, mm. the lens to the curvature mm. of the filter. And in, in machine vision, it, it, I may be wrong or right, but uh, traditionally, I feel like the filter is almost an afterthought. You know, they get the camera, they, they get the lens, mm. they have the resolution they want, they get the picture, and then they realize, oh, well, it's yeah. not good enough. Well, let's try and add a filter. Right? Yeah. And, it's yeah. just, and there's <laughs> not a lot of real standard um, filter sizes, you know, they have to make them to fit, you know, like a C-mount lens mm. or, or, you know, and, and they're, they're part of the optical train, but they're a separate component. Mm. And it seems like you're talking about almost, almost making uh, custom yeah. uh, filters. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly what we do. I mean, I think if you look at our business, most of what we do is a custom filter because the designer really wants to, every last photon matters to them. So they'll come to us and say, you know, can you do this spectral profile in this, in this um, size and the shape? And I want this particular, you know, um, signal to noise type of performance. And that's what we do well. I mean, we very, very quickly can simulate it in our own software, really match what they need. And that clearly, that's matching to their system laser, et cetera, et cetera. Really match what they need. We're very flexible in size. We're very, very flexible in all these sort of um, optical specifications. We lock that in with them, and then you know it's great for them. They get a very high-performing part. It's great for us because you know they're buying from us in volume at that point. Mm -hmm. If I may add to that, actually, you know, to your point, uh, uh, with traditional filters, you always actually have to have this separate component. And you have to place it somewhere, right? You yeah. need to budget some real estate in your optical train for it. Whereas in our case, uh, you can either put it directly against the sensor or you can actually put it against an existing optical surface in your system, right? So it gives more flexibility in, in terms of design where you can find where strategically the best location for the filter is and then you place it there to get the highest, the highest you know, signal to noise ratio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's really interesting to me. And I know we've been focusing on like robotics and machine vision and inspection, but I, I feel like uh, maybe this conversation uh, is missing a key point. You know, you're talking about a laser optics mm -hmm. and the importance of filters there mm -hmm. in terms of uh, a laser damage threshold. And, and these filters have to hold up in those types of applications. You know, it, I don't know, do you get into industrial laser, like material processing applications? as well as like the lab automation or medical or you mm. know, what, what kind of space in the photonics mm. industry in, in industrial applications mm. do you guys do you want to take it? You can. You can. Okay, yeah, sure. So uh, our current target is really on mass volume markets, mm. which they happen to be more of the low power applications, right? Uh, so, um, uh, but you know, eventually if and when we decide to get into higher power applications for material processing, we just need to change the material that we're using for constructing our filters. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe it, worth, it helps also just to understand. So our system, you know, most optical filters, they're based on sputtering of some sort, you know, some sort of mm. de deposition on a piece of glass. We do it completely different. We basically take a, a P-form of various ind index materials and then we draw it much like you would dry an, draw an optical fiber through heat. And that actually mm. merges the, the, the thing into a very thin, very flexible f uh, film that we can then cut to the size we need. Mm. So our skill set really is in designing, you know, what goes into that system and then what's drawn through the, uh, uh, the the draw tower, and so really, it's a very scalable process. And once that recipe is locked in, we're uh, we're very um, consistent in our results. So. Yes. Yeah. What else? Uh, what else haven't we talked about in terms of general trends in photonics or or in any of the you know industrial automation? These mm -hmm. markets. Do you do you have any predictions or things you see on the horizon as being particularly important? Quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go for it, please. Well, well I, I think we, you know, we covered most of them. I think for for me, really, it's the 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 photonics is really replacing the the typical camera in in so many different applications, and it is because of the performance. I mean, basically, the the wavelength of light is very small, and that means you can actually work that and get a lot of data from that, um, and very cheaply. So, you know, we are focused on customizing to our large volume customer needs, making sure we really help them in their system design and then scale. And I think that aspect too is very important that you you can get a good design win, you can get it in, but if you are unable to hit the quality specs, if you're unable to hit their volume requirements, particularly for the big tier one customers, they will not trust you. Um, so a lot of what we are doing really is establishing great processes, great systems, and being that reliable supplier that they can come to and say, I've got you know five new designs. In many cases, they do have multiple designs. We get the best one for them and uh, we move forward. So it's really exciting. I think we, we as Everix are right in the right place at the right time. And generally, Photonics West is going to continue to be bigger and bigger as more the world, mm. world uses optics more and more. Mm. So. There's one particular uh, market trend that I want to highlight, and that's actually augmented reality field, mm. which uh, arguably maybe not directly a part of, let's just say, automation or industrial vision, right? Well, I mean, I've seen some people using yeah, for manufacturing training. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. right. Yeah. Basically, yeah. enterprise yeah. applications, yeah. medical applications, manufacturing applications, and um, it turns out that uh, these designs, they really benefit from having really high performing optical filters in their system. And a lot of them are not currently using it because um, a traditional filters actually fail uh, to provide the right performance on a plastic curved surface that you typically have in AR, VR. Uh, the headset. So that's an area that we're actually seeing great traction and mm -hmm. we have reasons to believe that we're probably going to be the main filter platform for that entire industry, let alone the sensor applications, all the sensors that go into AR, VR headsets. So. Yeah. Reasons to believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? there, I'm just <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, we've covered a good amount here. John, anything else or anything else you guys wanted to add? No, just thank you guys for having the chance to come and chat, chat with you. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course. If uh, people want to learn more about the company, is it everix.com or is it a different URL? Everix Optical Filters okay. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, check it out. Um, check them out on LinkedIn. They've got a page there. And if you have any questions, we'd be, we'd be happy to pass them along. It's uh, manufacturing-matters.com. Reach out with any general questions or comments, and thanks for listening or watching. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank awesome. you very much. Well,